What's going on, everybody? It's the Hook Cam back again with another film breakdown. And, uh, you know, I went through and I did the much more general, like, 4-3 versus 3-4, why Nickel isn't the new base videos. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. Just more, like, really general football information. Um, and I kind of want to tie that into a team that I do a lot of videos on, which is the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and I want to go over in this video how the Chiefs bringing pressure on third down and running games on third down really helped win them a Super Bowl. And in the most crucial situations, um, I really think that they turned to, to bringing pressure, turning up the heat, and uh, really letting those guys win one-on-one -on -one battles. Now, before I dive too far into this video, if you could subscribe to my channel, The Hook Cam, as well as to Jackson Kruger Sports, that would mean the world to both of us. Uh, we're both pumping out content here, hopefully going to keep up with it. Um, three, four videos a week would be uh, ideal for me however I do have school starting back up work is starting to kick in but uh, I'm gonna do my best to keep pumping out content me and the hook Eric so with all that being said guys let's dive on into this video looking first with the Chiefs at this game against the Texans now this was a weird game to break down let's be real this was a very weird game to break down because it wasn't to me like there were a lot of crucial third downs there was a huge fourth down stop there was a lot of turnovers, but there were situations where the Chiefs were bringing pressure on third down. Now, this is much later in the game, um, and the Chiefs are already up, I think, 20 points at, at this stage in the game. However, what I do think is really important about this, and you can kind of see, is just kind of the thought process with how to bring pressure on third down. Now, in this situation, they're going to bring two away from the back, and all that's going to happen is uh, the Texans are going to slide into their hinge protection. I shouldn't say slide. They're going to work into their hinge protection, um, and all that's going to happen is really simple the Chiefs are going to work inside and inside here and then they're going to bring two to the outside um, and really it's just bringing more guys and the Texans can account for with this hinge protection um, and again it's not like this is a super crucial down in this game the Chiefs are already up by a ton at this point however it does just kind of show you how bringing heat can really throw a, a quarterback off his game now Deshaun obviously puts a, a decent ball here catchable not the best ball in the world but still just bringing that added pressure can really help throw a quarterback off their game now here's a situation against the titans early in this ball game where the the chiefs do bring a little bit of heat and it does work out to their advantage now are they bringing six or seven no but they do bring an extra guy to match up with the back which i think is really important because what it does is it creates one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board Right, and I really felt like when looking at the Chiefs third down defense especially, a lot of what they were doing was trying to get this dude with a one-on-one -on -one matchup, which is super smart. It's exactly what I would do, right? Not saying that I'm super smart, but that's exactly I think what anybody would do, right? Trying to get Chris Jones, your best pass rusher, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And then you match up Chris Jones and Frank Clark on the same side, it's gonna be some problems, okay? Now, what happens with this pressure that I think is really cool and something that I did notice consistently with the Chiefs throughout the, pre for, throughout the playoffs excuse me is that they were going to match the back one-on-one -on -one, which is super common for defenses if this back's going to stay in, in and protect then this backer is going to come and rush right which is exactly what happens they're going to run hinge protection here so we're going to slide to the left with our offensive line for the titans uh they're going to man up on the back side so he's going to be manned up with that he's going to be manned up with that uh three tech or four eye and then the back is for this backer right here now what that does is it creates a situation where you're not going to get any help from the back and it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one win situation for Chris Jones. He's going to shed that guard and work upfield to Ryan Tannehill. And that's one thing that I really did love about what Spagnuolo did was the fact that he created one-on-one -on -one situations and he really did it only bringing five right a couple of times he would bring six but for the most part he was only bringing five guys and like i said what that does for you is it creates a one-on-one -on -one situation for your best pass rusher to go and win now the reason why i really like this clip is because this is supposed to be a screen right and what we're going to get at the bottom here is we're going to get a stunt so we're going to work upfield with our inside defensive lineman we're going to stunt inside with our with our looper right here um and what that does is it, it eats up the tackle and guard who are supposed to be out on a screen and you can see as we work through here <laughs> the well and we'll see it from the end zone the guard ends up getting way too involved with that defensive tackle but he, he doesn't really have a choice he has to in a screen you're not just going to let him loose you do have to at some point you got to block a little bit right you can't just let guys free on a screen in this situation right the guard works here at this point he's trying to shed but he can't and what happens is that defensive tackle works right up straight through the guard and the tackle and now we got nobody out here on this screen how do you know it's a screen because 76 is flying i believe that's roger saffold trying to get upfield and make a block but it's too late 
Um, and you've also got other offensive linemen running behind that. But just those pressures on third down, it's going to make quarterbacks think, and it's going to get in the way of a lot of what offenses want to run. It's going to mess with protections. In that situation, it messes with a screen. Uh, I just I think that bringing pressure on third down is the way to go, in my humble opinion. I've never coached defense. I've never been a defensive coordinator. I've coached offensive line, and I can tell you that when teams bring pressure on third down, it is an absolute headache for me to make sure that all five dudes who are up front and the back – are ready to go with every every pressure that you could bring and it takes up a lot of practice time and it's tough to practice against you got to make sure your protections are good to go and solid against it however many protections you're going to run against it um and it's it, it's a lot it's a it's a lot to comprehend and it's a lot to do now in the in, in the nfl obviously in the league that's what those guys are paid for and they're probably very very good at it and they probably don't look at pressure on third down as something as scary as i would however for me i know it was a headache now this situation right here, once again, the the, te- the Titans, excuse me, I'm about to say the Texans, the Titans are running their hinge protection. So we're going to slide to the screen, the left of the screen, that would be the offense's right, and then we're going to man protect with the backside here. So he's going to work on that defensive end. This guard is going to work on that three tech or whoever's in the B gap. And then this uh, back right here is going to pick up any pressure that comes through on the inside gap, which is exactly what they want to do. However, what they do, and something that I love about it, once again, what happens, you create one on one matchup for Chris Jones, which is, which is probably going to win, right? Now, on the back side of this thing, they bring a game, right? They bring a stunt, which is so key, especially when you're running. And this slide protection, it just it eats up, right? We have three offensive linemen now working on Tapasenyo, as I said his name wrong previously, Tapasenyo. We have three offensive linemen working on Tapasenyo, which means that we got Frank Clark coming free on a loop. And you bring pressure to one side, you bring that looper on the other side. This is just a phenomenal blitz dialed up here on third down. Get Tannehill out and running some, somewhere where he's not super comfortable at this stage in his career. And we got ourselves a big third down stop. Again, I, I just think the Chiefs brought pressure and they brought games consistently throughout this playoffs. And I just want to shed some light on it, really. That's all I want to do. Another massive down in this game. And what we're going to see here is a blitz that looks a lot like the blitz that we just saw. We're going to work upfield with our two defensive linemen here. We're going to delay. Lay 56 just a little bit, which is very Spagnuolo. If you guys remember 2007, 2011, when he was coaching for the Giants, this delayed blitz just absolutely shredded the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And I, I remember being a young buck, being a Pats fan, and watching it, and you know, just kind of being like shocked and perplexed. I was like, "What is going on? How are they getting this pressure?" And of course, a couple of days later, you're watching it and you see. I believe it was like. Uh, Ko- Koiki Mitchell or something was his name and he was just crushing through the A-gap sack. He had a couple of sacks on Brady but with that being said that delayed blitz that Spagnuolo likes to bring guess what it's still there it's still relevant right and we bring that delayed blitz to the hinge protection side again creating that one-on-one matchup and then what else are we going to do we're going to bring a little game on the back side here and really all you're doing is you're funneling your pressure right into the middle of this protection you spread everything out with where the other the, the extracurriculars are with your three tech and your five tech right you bring all that stuff to the outside and then you loop back to the inside and it really pinches the quarterback he doesn't really have anywhere to go now he can't break the pocket because there's loopers to the outside and he can't step up into the pocket because he's got pressure. Just one thing that I noticed about the Chiefs this year on their run to the Super Bowl that maybe they didn't do in years prior. Now, with this situation here against the Niners, you've shown pressure so much out of in certain down and distances that now teams are going to account for it. And so what the Niners are going to do here is they're going to run just a really simple pick route, right? We're working here, we're working vertically with George Kittle, and then we're working underneath right here with 26, Tevin Coleman, I believe that is. Now, what do the Chiefs do? They want to give that illusion. We're bringing heat. We're bringing heat. It's going to be man across the board. you got to throw hot. And what they do is they drop out of it now. And that's really the, the next step to bringing that pressure on third down. Now it gives you that ability to show, hey, we're going to, we're, we're going to show you a pressure look and then we're going to drop out of it. And again, this this is exactly where the ball should be thrown. Yeah, he could probably hit it to Kittle over the middle. That's not his first read, though. And this is a great job with his man, uh, man coverage right, right underneath. Making a tackle short of the sticks, phenomenal job from the Chiefs in that situation. But again, they don't get there. They don't have this opportunity 
if they're not bringing heat throughout the playoffs before this, right? You drop off, got a wall off three. 54 probably could have done a better job of walling off Kittle. However, it didn't matter. That wasn't the first read that he was going to. Here we go with another big down in this game. And what we have here is we have two um, would-be backers, I guess I would dub them. However, this is Tyran Matthew, and I believe that's 56. Um, and again, they just drop off here. And it's, it's that idea of that illusion of, hey, we're going to bring heat, and then you drop off into it. It plays mind games with the quarterbacks. And the Chiefs did this continuously throughout the third quarter and then a little bit into the fourth and then when things got really really crucial for the Chiefs when they needed a stop they brought heat right and in this situation right here this isn't a crazy pass rush they're not doing anything out of the ordinary as far as where they're where they're bringing their pressure right it's just four dudes running upfield trying to get to the quarterback however I think that dropping those guys off who are lined up in both the a gaps that's what creates that confusion. I know that's what happens. I know that's what creates that confusion because I've been in that situation before as an offensive line coach where you're looking at two dudes standing in the A-gap. You have to account for that. You can't just blow that off and let everything go, right? And then you look at this situation right here, this third down. And again, a, a really interesting look that I do think is becoming more popular in the NFL. And really all I'm talking about is this three de defensive linemen uh, to one side of the line of scrimmage. You really overload. And I would imagine... Oh, line wise, you're just going to assume it's man protection um, from that side over, right? Obviously, you'll pass things off if there's a game or whatever. And then you got your back on this uh, this linebacker right here. Now, what I do think is interesting about this is you stunt 20, 92, excuse me, what to call him 29, 92 across the formation right here across the center's face. And that's going to open up this gap right now. The back's not looking to this gap. The back's focused on 49, who's now bringing pressure. So once again, we've created the one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board. And then, of course, the cherry on top, very Spagnuolo. We're going to bring 56 on a delayed blitz right here. And just a great call. The pressure lands. You force a bad throw. Everything about that pressure has been dialed up from, you know, games past. And not only games past, but earlier in this game as well. So once again, I just I love the... The idea, I love the philosophy of bringing heat on third down. To use an example of that, I thought the Chiefs did a really good job of it this year in the playoffs. These were just a couple of examples of bringing that pressure on third down, what it can do for your defense, and how much versatility you can bring to your defense bringing that pressure. Now, there's a lot that goes into it. You're not going to go and install all these pressures on day one. This is stuff that you install throughout the season. Um, but again, just my little thought process on uh, bringing heat on third down, how well the Chiefs did with it this year on their run to the playoffs. Um, and how much it aided them in that. With all that being said, guys, I'm the Hook Cam. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that uh, you found it informative. Again, just kind of trying to do more general video topics, not necessarily uh, super focused, but, you know, it, it's a dead time right now, so I'm doing the best I can to keep pumping out content. Um, we should have a podcast coming out hopefully this Thursday. Hopefully going to have a, a for sure day nailed down here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm moving around jobs, so schedule's a little, little weird right now. But anyway, guys, with all that being said, I'm the Hook Cam. hope you enjoyed this video hope you found it informative if you did if you could hit that like button hit that subscribe button to my channel as well as to jackson kruger sports that would mean the world to both of us so with all that being said guys stay safe out there wash those hands and i will see you next time